What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to episode seven of the show with no name, which is really like episode, what, like 25-ish? Yep. 30-ish? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's confusing, but you're all here with us, so we're happy about that. With me, as always, is Pastor Leo. Como está, everyone? Hello, Pastor Leo. Officially, Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're uh, what, a couple, couple weeks in now when this goes live? Right. This is the first thing we've recorded where we're saying Happy New Year that's actually after the New Year or Christmas. That's so true. (laughs) Which, speaking of which, I haven't really seen you since. Did you have a great Christmas? No. No. We were all sick. Oh, boy. I was was supposed to lead one of the worship songs um, in Tioga Uh, for the Christmas Eve service. You weren't able to? Yep. (sighs) That's a bummer. Yeah, I told Japheth, yeah, you go. (laughs) I'll, I'll play the guitar, but... Oh, so you st- you were able to at least be there for the I service. I was there. Okay. I played the guitar, but the kiddos were sick yeah. too. Mm-hmm. All of us seems to have been the Williston way this year. <laughs> just this, like I feel like everyone was sick over break. So there's just that a bunch a, of stuff going on. That was around. a Christmas present for oh, everyone. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Send us Christmas present for everyone. A virus. Uh, now we usually discuss. Uh, cultural differences around large things like this. Is there any like Filipino tradition for Christmas that someone like me might not be aware of? Do you guys like we start in September? Do? Well, <laughs> we know that, and we then we end that. in January. <laughs> when in January? Like, are you done now, or is it still Christmas in your in your brain? Uh, technically, still Christmas okay. until the sixth. The sixth. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when this podcast goes live, you will have officially moved on from officially Christmas. moved on. Okay. Now, have you? Are you like in Valentine's Day mode then? Because Walmart is in Valentine's oh, The yeah. day after Christmas, that Walmart had shifted their Christmas <laughs> section to Valentine's we went there, Day. there. Everything like, was what? pink. What is happening? <laughs> that was crazy. Man. It's kind of impressive. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. Uh, well, we are continuing on in our study of Romans. <clears throat> we're in Romans 14, finally. Mm-hmm. We've made it to Romans 14, and we're no longer taking suggestions. No, wait. Speaking of which, I oh. brought... Right. I, I was going to get to yeah. that. I was going to get to that. So I was just... Because it's a Christmas tradition. I was oh, no, it's a New Year's tradition in the Philippines. Like we serve a platter of everything <laughs> oh. that's round. Round? Round fruits, especially. Okay. Round. Yeah. That's odd, but I'm fine <laughs> with it. I like it. Pizzas are round, so I'm on board. This sounds like a great plan. I was going to say, just real quick, we're in Romans 14, verses 1 through 12, so great time to just pause if you haven't read yet. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and read along with us so that you know all the things Pastor Leo is talking about. Before we get to that, yes, mm. I, the smell in this room is majestic. And Michael has remained. Michael has other things he needs to be doing, <laughs> but he's going to stay for the food part. So would you like to reveal the round? I assume it's round food inside of a round container. Mm -hmm. A a very warm round It is very warm. It's kind of cold in the office today. (laughs) This is kind of, I'm just going to, this is kind of nice. Put your hand on there. This is what we call shopau. Shopau? Did I I get that right? Shopau, yeah. It's uh, it's from the Chinese shubau. Oh, well, now I get it. That was really helpful. Thank <laughs> right. you. Yeah, Michael as well. Michael's nodding along. We both. If you've seen that short from Disney where it's about that, that lady who made that pork bun and then the pork bun, pork bun came alive. Oh, what? The, na- the, the title of that <laughs> short is Bao. That, that's oh. what it is. Okay, I've seen that on yeah. like Disney Plus, mm-hmm. but I don't believe I've ever clicked on it. Just, uh, oh, that, whoa. We got more. <gasps> There were more hiding underneath. <laughs> Michael, we'll you, better come, with the you better come grab one of, of the these, staff Michael. Later. So what, what do I do with it? You just eat it. Just don't eat the paper under That's it. That's helpful. <laughs> some, pe- a, some people on staff might actually need that piece right. of advice. There's someone on staff who I'm not going to mention that uh, got tamales and Ooh. ate them without taking them out of the corn husk. It just ate it husk nice. and all. So that person might need your, uh, your <laughs> instructions. It smells wonderful. Mm-hmm. Cheers, Michael. Uh, everyone say hello, hello to Michael in the comments. You just got to see <laughs> him for a brief bit. Yeah. It's been a while since they saw him. It is. What's in here? Pork. And? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, no, that, that's, that's a hard-boiled egg. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's less terrifying than I thought it was going to be. When I said, what's in here? And you said pork. I'm like, that is not pork, buddy. 
This is delicious. I would have said adob- um, uh, avocado, but yeah. You, you already took to a bite. Once. <laughs> Michael is giving a thumbs up off mm-hmm. camera. Mm. <clears throat> I don't want to chew right into the <laughs> microphone. Vamp Leo. Well, that's um, that. That's a Chinese uh, dish, food, delicacy mm. kind of thing. Um, if if you watch kung fu movies, like the old Jackie Chan movies, <clears throat> there are times, especially when they're like Shanghai Noon, mm-hmm, something like that. <laughs> I, I don't know Shanghai Noon. You don't remember that one? I remember oh, that with one, Owen but I, I'm trying to remember if they ate bao in that. I one. doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> There's pretty focused on the uh, There's a side of things. Different kind of fillings for that. Sometimes we use chicken. That's pork. Uh, there's also one without the filling, <coughs> just the bread, what they call it the kua pao. Oh. Well, it's wonderful. Thank you. Even though you scared me by telling me it was pork and then something that was clearly not <laughs> pork was staring at me. Should I have said like pork eyeball? <laughs> yeah, what's uh, uh, bal- b- balut, right? Balut. That's the thing that you there will never go. get me to eat without tricking me somehow. <laughs> Michael's, Michael, you, you may, yeah, you may leave. Yeah. Everybody Everyone, say yeah. goodbye, Everyone Michael. say goodbye, <laughs> Michael. Michael, would you like to... Speak any words? No, Mike, he can't no. do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man! Well, thank you, Leo. It's always a treat when you. Did you make this? Did your wife make this? Uh, I made the dough. Okay. Uh, she made the filling. Nice. Well, it's wonderful. Thank shout you. Shout out to Andy and to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take another bite here while it's still hot. Because as we said, we'll leave it's, one piece it's, for the, yeah, the well, rest there, of the a, staff. There, to remember, share. there's the the mystery layer in there mm-hmm. that I didn't know was. I thought it was just a really tall box. <laughs> no, it's not. And I was confused as to why, because like clearly, but this part stops right here. I'm like, right. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> there's more in there. Yeah, it's like when more. you get if you get like like dumplings mm-hmm. at a at a Chinese place. Uh, that's how they steam their stuff. Yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. In America, the only steamed food we eat are White Castle cheeseburgers. Mm. And have you ever had White Castle, Leo? No. <gasps> Leo. No, not yet. You need to branch out. They're, they're, <laughs> you're, good luck. There's finding, no they're, White yeah, they're Castle not, branches here. Not even close to yep. where we are. But one day, Much you'll be like somewhere to branch with a White out. Castle. There's Next no. time you're like driving through Minnesota or something, mm-hmm. there's some White Castles over there. Ooh. Maple Grove. That's probably Last the Last time one. we went to Minnesota, we saw one, but... We didn't know what it was. Yeah. That's like a personal favorite of me and my father Ooh. is White Castle. Uh, and a personal least favorite of my wife and my mother's. <laughs> so we don't really go there as a family very often. Which is kind of strange for us because White Castle in the Philippines is more of an alcoholic drink. Oh. <laughs> they don't <laughs> so, think they'll have those there. Yeah. Although <laughs> they're usually 24 hours and sometimes not in great Areas, so you probably could find yourself plenty of alcoholic <laughs> drinks outside of a White Castle at like there 3 a.m. But uh, anyway, let's get into Romans. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> uh, like I said before, we're in Romans 14 verses yes. 1 through 12. Um, hopefully, you've been reading along with us. If you've missed any episodes, you can always go back and find those. Um, but yeah, why don't you start us off with your summary, like you always do, Pastor Leo? All right. So for uh, chapter 14, especially verses 1 to 12. Um, Paul was addressing those who were strong in the faith. And by strong in the faith, we mean Christians who understand their spiritual liberty in Christ and do not feel obligated to obey rules on diets or <laughs> holy days. As I, as I shovel bread <laughs> and meat into my face. Right. Especially <laughs> pork. Yeah, that could, good point. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the weak in faith, quote unquote, <clears throat> we're putting air quotes here, weak in faith that Paul talks about are those who do. So, uh, Paul's encouragement to us is in uh, welcome one another. Uh, that's what he is telling us to do. And he gave us four reasons why we ought to welcome one another. Are we certain that Paul just wasn't like a foodie? And he threw this chapter in. Just yeah. he's like, "Hey, I like eating pork." Guys, like I've got my like I've been around Rome, and there's a lot mm-hmm. of good food over there. Like I think we should just start branching out a little bit. Right, that's the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> he was in like downtown Williston, where there's right. randomly like nine different ethnic restaurants from all over the world that are all delicious. And he's that's like, right. "We gotta eat all this. We're yep. not doing this food thing." I anymore. mean, come on, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you know the rules that we often get hung up on. 
you know, in in, in 2024, mm-hmm. I almost said 2023 because 2024 doesn't sound like a real year yet in my brain. It's, <laughs> it sounds really? like a science fiction novel. You got to say it like three times fast. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'll, <laughs> I'll mess up and feel embarrassed. Mm-hmm. But Click the, your heels and then say it three the, times. <laughs> just, do I go backwards? And then you're going to go <laughs> to 2024. I'm already there. The already real worked. one. <laughs> uh, the rules we get hung, hung up on today are aren't always like they could, they could still be food. Like he's, right. you know, talks about in those early verses there. Um, but it's not just the things that they were dealing with. Then we, we often have different things. We also have 2000 years of church tradition that they yes. did not have at that point That's right. to get hung up on. Now they had, you know, a thousand, you know, whatever, 1500 ish years of, of Abrahamic religion to get hung up on. Um, but we have all of that plus our 2000 <laughs> years of Christian church tradition. So and it's there's, fun. there's just so many different things that we get, yes. we get hung up on so many rules and traditions and, and things that, that we try to make into the thing that's going to forgive us of our sins. That's right. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> sadly, um, it's a tough topic to talk about. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a tough topic to write. I noticed your notes when I looked over your notes you were a little you were a little feisty at yeah. times, Leo. <laughs> a little feisty. Cuz it's a it's a pet peeve yeah. of mine. But sadly, I could tell. Uh, many quote unquote Christians think and act like um like they, the one who follow the rules, are the most mature. Like these people who follow all of the um, traditions and the yeah. practices. Um, uh, it's either just the 2,000 years or they include even the ones before that, the Abrahamic yep. rules and traditions. Um, but this is not the case. Even today, quote-unquote Christians again, Christians who blindly follow the law and do not enjoy their freedom in the Lord are what Paul refers to as weak. So, um, again... Uh, what what we're talking about here is blindly following the law. Like you follow the law because everyone does it, or it has been what the family has been doing. Right. Or you completely misconstrue. Like because, but before we even dive deeper, mm-hmm. by no means is Leo saying. I don't want to speak for you, but yeah, tell me if I'm wrong. By no means is Leo saying or am I saying like. Anything that's considered a tradition or a, like a rule at a church is inherently evil and wrong. Like, yes. no, there, there are, <laughs> there are tra- <laughs> no, traditions that no, are fine. It's, the, yes. But it's when those, when, like, we, like we just talked about, it's when those traditions are, start to become the, the things you worship, basically. And like, yeah. the, those are the things I have to do to be saved from my sins. And that you basically replace your relationship with Jesus with mm-hmm. following this rule and, and, you know, doing this sacrament and doing this task and, right. uh, you know, all these things. And they, and then like so, I've done it, so I must go to heaven now or yeah. something like that. And I, very often, not exclusively by any means, but very often those are the Christians that will, um, usually consider themselves the strongest Christians, right? I follow right. the most rules, therefore I'm the strongest Christian. And now it's, you know, I'll start pointing out and condemning all of mm-hmm. the other, which again is what, you know, Paul was was seeing in the early church as well. The, the people who were missing the mark, mm-hmm. the weak Christians he's referring to, considered themselves the, the great ones. So now it's my job to condemn all these people that aren't, you know, following all the rules that I That's think they right. should be following. That's right. Um well, on the other hand, the, the Christians who do not feel obligated to follow laws and traditions are enjoying their freedom in Jesus, despite, uh, 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 well, those who do, those who, d- well. <laughs> start, over, start over, start <laughs> over. Start over. Those who do not, those who do not <clears throat> feel obligated, on the other hand, those who do not feel obligated to follow rules, the, the rules and traditions that other do, on the other hand, they too despise and make fun of the others like yeah. look at you you're following you don't even know what you're doing and like they, they make fun of of the other quote-unquote christians so these quote-unquote christians too <laughs> do, yeah. well do the other thing like on the opposite end of the spectrum they make fun of the others and they and in so doing they act more mature because yeah. they're not under the law anymore or according to them so here's the thing we hyper focus on certain aspects of christianity we make a religion around it put a wall around other around that religion 
and isolate and and bash the rest of the world because they're not the true Christians. And that's that's what that, that's what my pet peeve is all about. So it's uh the, the 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 people who isolate themselves because they follow the rules compared to the others sure. or the people the the quote unquote Christians who ridicule others because they don't. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's the cr- you know I don't know if we even need to continue the podcast. Just eh, it was perfect. Yeah. That was so beautifully said. That that's Paul. <laughs> yeah, that, in that, a nutshell, that like, was uh, Paul as he wrote this this <laughs> chapter. Just, ugh. No, I I think you know a lot of us have probably experienced that, and and unfortunately maybe have experienced being on both sides. Like I've certainly been uh, on the side where I you know. Uh, despise or make fun of the people that you know okay they like they're so hung up on their rules Mm -hmm. and their traditions and like i've got it figured out but i've also been on the other side where i i I remember being um i believe joanna and i were and i were married but this would have been like maybe our first year of marriage so a very young couple and we visited a church that our friends attended and i'm not going to say who or what church but a very very prominent uh like major teacher and leader in Mm -hmm. in the evangelical church um was the lead pastor and his sermon that day literally was about how they're the only church that does communion correctly. And if you've been doing communion at other churches, you've never truly taken communion until wow. today when you're going to take it with us. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, what? what is happening? And, and it just was such a jarring thing I'd never really experienced before growing up as a pastor's kid. It's not like I church hopped very often. Like I was at my dad's church all the time. So I was pretty comfortable with the way my dad's church did things. Um, and so, you know, it's just interesting to, to like, I've been on that side where I, like you were talking about where I, you know, mm-hmm. I, well, I'm enjoying my freedom while well, they're hung up on their traditions. Ha, ha, ha. But then I've, I've also experienced the, like, we're the only people that do this right. And you're not one of us. So you're, you're not, you're not it. You're not in, you're not in the special club. You, you were talking right. about the iso you know, the isolation mm-hmm. there of like, we're the only ones that do it. Everybody else is not, right. not real. And, and obviously Paul was Maybe, I don't know if experiencing this, but but hearing about this in the Roman church and, and not just in Rome. This was obviously going on in a lot of the early churches at the time. But he clearly had reason to address all of this in his letter. Mm-hmm. Um, and shockingly, it still applies today. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought we'd still be doing the same dumb wow. stuff 2,000 years later? <laughs> You'd think maybe we would have figured it out. But all right. So you uh, you have in your notes that there's, there's four reasons mm-hmm. why we should... Well, you you brought up welcoming one another kind of yes. in, your, in your intro, and there's four big reasons why we should welcome one another. Mm-hmm. So why don't we instead start of isolating? Instead of isolating, I mean, yeah, why? Right? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> that's my question. Can you give me four reasons why? Well, and okay. Re- hold on, Leo, real quick before mm-hmm. uh, my I just feel like I have a cough coming on Oops. that I don't want to send in the micro. So I'm going to open this can. <laughs> this is for everybody at home. Uh, ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, some yuzu citrus so, so, solil. I have no idea how to Soleil? say that. Some sparkling water. <laughs> I just know that that's, that, that's part of the name of that circus group, this Cirque du Soleil. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is some Cirque du Soleil water. I will not be doing any flips <laughs> while we record this podcast. All right. So give us uh, give us our reasons here, Leo. All right. So the first one is um, from <laughs> verses 1 to 3. Uh, Paul is saying that God has received us, meaning it's not our responsibility to decide the requirements for Christian fellowship right. in a church. Only the Lord can do this. So please, <laughs> let's just stop. So uh, to set up man-made restrictions in the basis of personal prejudices is to go beyond the Word of God. So because God has received us, we must receive one another. It just For me, it just makes logical sense. So we must not argue over matters like this, like the traditions and, and the practices, nor must we judge or despise one another. St. Augustine said it very, um, very clearly, and, and, and I like the way he says it, in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. And I think that's a good point. I wanted to interject mm-hmm. somewhere, and this is a good spot. Paul isn't saying, and nor are you saying, like there's there's just no there's no guiding line on anything. Like mm-hmm. we all can just do whatever we want, and like that's not 
that's not that's his point. not what that's not his point at all and and that's where when like this quote from saint augustine is in essentials and what he's referring to there like the essentials like jesus is the son of god mm-hmm. he's the only way the only way to the father is through him essentials like that like yeah, we have to have unity on that. That right. that is the kind of thing that in in other letters, like we see Paul addressing like major issues like that. Where he's like, no, like we're not <laughs> dealing with that. I mean, we've talked about it. Not, yep. not even other letters. We've talked about it here in Romans mm-hmm. a whole bunch. So the in the essentials, it's like, yeah, we we have to, and that's you know, he's getting to this towards the end of his letter. Yep, he's already addressed a lot of the essentials at this mm-hmm. point, and now he's like. Can we just stop with the non-essentials? Like, <laughs> like who cares if you're eating a carrot or a pig right now? Like, calm That's down. Right. Just follow Jesus and love each other. Um, but yeah, so that you know, that's because often you you bring up this topic, and and I've seen Romans 14 used to make those type of arguments where just like mm-hmm. truth is just relative and it is whatever you know, it, it can be whatever you want it want it to be and no. that's obviously not what Paul no, is talking that's about that's not what Paul is talking uh, but about but he's talking about the non-essentials mm-hmm. and then and then uh, like uh, how Augustine ends that in all things charity like even when we are maybe disagreeing about something mm-hmm. like charity caring yes. about other people let's just <laughs> let's just stop all the fighting <laughs> he should have started with in all things charity and then done the other three right. but you know what did saint augustine know i'm way smarter than that guy all right please continue okay so in every church there are weak and strong believers yeah you cannot avoid that there will always be weak and strong believers god has received both mm. the weak and the strong so Thank we goodness. in turn should receive one another too that's the first point. Yeah. And yeah, praise the Lord for that truth. Because oh, at, yes. at, at one point or another in our lives, we have all been a weak believer. And mm-hmm. I, for one, am very thankful that God has received me even when I am one of the weak ones. Amen to that. Second reason for us, Pastor Leo. All right. Verse Why should four, we welcome one another? Uh, the, the point of verse four is that God sustains his own. So God is the master. We yeah. Christians, we're his servants. So it is wrong for anyone to interfere with this relationship. God is the master. We, Mm -hmm. all of us, including you who consider yourself a strong Christian and you who consider yourself a weak Christian, we are all his servants. So our success in our Christian life, um, following Jesus, does not depend on the opinions or attitudes of other Christians. That's why it's a relationship. God is the judge, and he is able to make a stand. He does not need help to give his servants the strength to stand. The fact that we're God's servants means another thing. That's, it, it's, it's, it's this simple. We Christians ought to be busy working for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> think, think of all the dumb stuff we get up to when we're not busy working for the Lord that yeah, could be avoided right? if we were just, <laughs> just just get busy doing what God wants you to do and you won't have time to argue about this other stuff. That's right. About what type of music we're playing or <laughs> who knows what <laughs> other things so we true. argue about all the time. That is so true. I mean, imagine all the work that we could have done. If we were only busy for the Lord. I mean, if we're busy doing the Lord's work, we will not have the time to judge or condemn other Christians. Yeah. (laughs) Right? It's like like what, you know, you you want your uh, kid in like sports or some sort of after school activity Mm -hmm. when they're in high school because they can't get up to no good running around town if they're busy at basketball practice. That's right. Same idea. (laughs) Exactly the same idea. So uh, if you know someone who claims to be a Christian and is busy condemning and judging others, maybe it's a good idea to encourage them to get busy doing the Lord's work instead. Yeah. I mean, hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Back to the... Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's the third reason? All right, third reason. Uh, this is verses 5 to 9. Jesus Christ is Lord. So no Christian has the right to play God in another Christian's life. We can pray, we can advise, we can warn, we can even reprimand our fellow Christians, but we cannot take the place of God. So please... <laughs> Paul's point is this. A Christian who observes special days, like the Sabbath, as holy, does so unto the Lord. Yep. A Christian who eats pork. (laughs) All right, you tricked me into eating pork, and now I'm an example for this podcast. It's ridiculous. All right, so a, a Christian who eats pork gives thanks 
unto the Lord, and the Christian who abstains from pork abstains yeah. unto the Lord. So to be fully persuaded or assured in one's own mind, that's Romans 14 verse 5, means that the person is absolutely 100% certain that what he or she is doing is for the Lord, not because follow, they're following rules, yep. just blindly following rules. They're doing it for <coughs> the Lord. So if in their mind they are doing it for the Lord, as long as their belief and practice is not essential to biblical Christianity, and it's not going against what is essential. Again, just like what Augustine says, mm -hmm. we have no right to play God in their life. Yeah, you said take like we shouldn't be taking the place of God. Talk to us a little bit about what that looks like maybe in our modern context as okay. well. Okay. Um well some of the practices in our local churches are traditional but not necessarily scriptural. <coughs> and that's that's okay. We have what? things like that. <laughs> it's it's yeah. So some people make a big deal about Bible translations being used at church. KGV only. That's <laughs> Amen. That's the only one. <laughs> that guy, like, whatever. I don't know. Fourteen hundred what years <laughs> after the fact, figured out the only correct translation, right. and that's the one we're gonna go with. Um. So yeah, some people don't <laughs> recognize Paul or any of the apostles' authority. Mm. Some people get worked up when anything other than hymns are sung at church, or when hymns are sung at church, or when hymns are sung at church, <laughs> depending on the age of that person. <laughs> so most true. Likely. Some people yep. get worked up when there are musical instruments, mm. especially drums. Ooh, electric guitar. Oh, electric guitars. Unacceptable. The instrument of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> right? We have to realize one thing. The church is divided and weakened because mm. Christians will not allow Jesus Christ to be Lord. In the same way that Jesus told Peter, what is that to you? You must follow me. In John 21, verse 22, when Peter started messing around with John's business, I mean, like, what is he doing? Look <laughs> at him. Like, Jesus responds, what is that to you? Follow me. Yeah. Right? I mean, Jesus is telling us the same thing. Whenever we condemn other Christians because of something we disagree with that is not essential or forbidden in the Bible. This, so this is me. Just me, personally, reminding all of us. What is that to you? Whatever it is that you're getting worked up on. What is that to you? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Let him be Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the you, like <clears throat> we talk so much about how we wish for more peace and more unity, like in our nation, in mm -hmm. the church, and how often, especially in the church, how often would we see more of that if our first instinct was like take these issues that I have to God rather than go attack Leo because I'm right. frustrated with him because he <laughs> sneakily fed me pork or, <laughs> you know, but we just, but we just so, so often we just skip over that and we're like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm more holy because I'm, mm -hmm. I have this one extra thing that I hold to that you don't hold to. Therefore mm -hmm. I can hold it above your head that I do this thing. And we ignore these verses where Paul is telling us like whether, whether you, whether you only eat vegetables or whether you eat pork, like you're doing those things unto the Lord, like you were saying. And, and as long as you're doing them unto the Lord, like you just follow him. Like everything, yeah. everything's going to be so much better if our <laughs> right. first instinct is follow Jesus. What is that to you? All right. You got the fourth point for us. Last All one. Right. Fourth point. Um, <laughs> Jesus is judge. That's verses 10 to 12. Jesus is judge. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, I wrote it lately. I am the law. <laughs> <laughs> he was not playing Jesus. He was not uh, playing Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly but, different character. But um. yeah, it's uh, Paul asks us, why are you judging and despising your brother? Hmm. I mean, I'm asking all of us right yeah. now, to, why are you judging and despising your brother? Regardless of whether you consider yourself as a strong or a weak Christian, here's the thing. We will all stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and we will not judge one another. So whether you're a strong Christian, whether you consider yourself as a weak Christian, that's going to happen, and we are not going to judge one another. We yep. will all still be judged by Jesus. So how do we prepare for that? By judging one another? Eh -eh. <laughs> nuh -uh. <laughs> right? A lot of sound effects from you today, Leo. I like it. <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> New year, new like you. Like I said, it's pet peeve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, 
we, we don't do it by criticizing others, but by making Jesus Lord of our lives. And mm-hmm. so instead of judging other Christians, why don't we just judge our own lives and make sure that we're ready to meet Jesus at the judgment seat? See, when Jesus is Lord, we permit him to deal with his own servants as he wishes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here's the summary for today. We are one body. We are all members of the body of Christ. When we consider the needs of others above our own, the church thrives and God is glorified. The body of Christ can and will be healthy when we stop bickering (laughs) and in fighting. About non-essentials. About the non-essentials and non-essentials liberty yeah yeah i think i think following paul's example just from the book of romans to like have a really really hard stand on the essentials Mm -hmm. like these things are not negotiable yes and then on everything else Mm -hmm. like (laughs) just follow jesus and let other people follow jesus isn't it funny how the world works right now the essentials become optional yeah and and the the non-essentials Everyone gets so worked up about it, yep. like they're so important. Yep, it's true. Must be the devil working, I'm you just got, saying. Got some questions for us today, Leo? All right, here are the questions. Number one, what do our disputes reflect to those who are outside the church? Ooh. When they see all of these infighting and all of the bickering, what do, what does it reflect uh, uh, like on us? Like, What can we do to get better at obeying Paul's command in this verse? I like that one. Let's do, I mean, they're all... Your questions are always all good, Leo. But I like that one. Let's let's all jump in the chat and answer that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, start. Let's start twenty twenty four off the right way by jumping in the comments and Please. giving the answer to question number one. All right, number two. Do any of the disputes we hear among Christians, especially disputes over non essential things, justify those who break fellowship with their fellow Christians? Why or why not? And then number three, in what ways does this passage change your perspective? How should you treat people who disagree with you on non-essential issues? Yeah, and make sure you don't get uh, too high and mighty because you're on one side or the other. Like we Mm -hmm. talked about, the the people who uh, enjoy their freedom, we also have that tendency to then judge the people who (laughs) aren't doing so. So, We tend to gloat. uh, Yeah, yeah. Like get very braggadocious about it so Mm -hmm. well uh thank you pastor leo Mm -hmm. uh next week our next step is going to be reading our verses for next week we're going to finish up romans 14 uh it here's a spoiler alert it starts with a therefore yes so we've got like we've we've built everything up in those first 12 verses and then we've got a therefore that's going to hit you for the second therefore so uh read along with us make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't done that yet there's a little subscribe button uh Mm -hmm. underneath the video or if you're listening on a podcast you're probably subscribed because it's kind of hard to find podcasts if you're not subscribed that's but if you're not go ahead uh leave us a review on on apple podcasts or on spotify uh, a comment and a like on YouTube would be great. It helps other people find our videos. Mm-hmm. Um, even just our own New Hope people, it, it just makes it easier to, to find them because they get more populated when they get those things. So subscribe, so turn true. your notifications on if you don't have those on. So you get notified when the new episodes go live every single Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also have the Grow podcast that goes live every single Monday. So check that out as well. Um, Pastor Leo, this was great. It's been a while since we've podcasted together with the, the Christmas break. So this, <laughs> it was fun to get back into it. I'm excited to finish chapter 14 next. And we're uh, we're approaching the end of Romans. Yes. It's been quite the journey. It's mm-hmm. been pretty fun. So thank you all for being with us, New Hope Family. We're, we're so thankful for you, uh, what, no matter what of our many campuses that you attend. Williston, Tioga, online, any of our church plants like PH Church. or, or uh, I know we've got some people from... Um, Central City that listen uh, some people from uh, 219 that listen shout out to all of you guys Mm -hmm. you're all the best we love you very much uh, and we will see you next time